I haven't uploaded anything in uh, more than a week now. I'm just filming this uh, little progress update. Um, I'm cutting out pieces for my x-axis carriage at the moment. Um, so that's kind of the next stage from the uh, spindle carriage uh, is the, the thing which will carry the z-axis on it uh, and move along the x-axis. I'm not going to go through the um, x-axis build now and it will be I don't think there's much point in filming another build video for that either because it's more or less it's made out of parts which um, I've mostly filmed being built already um, but in the process of designing it um, I had to come up with this part here um, what this is is it's just laser cut out of 3mm acrylic um, and it's for holding two pieces of M8 threaded rod together so the way it works this is part of my x-axis build but it's really more or less the only in original bit which I, I had to design um, and this is for kind of bracing in the same way that a, a rep wrap is braced one bit of, uh, of M8 rod would go through there it has occurred to me that I could make this design parametric as well which as in that would mean uh, you could uh, change values in the software to, to make it fit any size of threaded rod because the idea with this is it's kind of the smallest form fact possible to get those pieces of rod joined together like that um, and they're almost touching inside so it's, it's kind of the most compact thing as I could make uh, on the laser cutter um, and it should be fairly strong as well because the idea is I'm not directly relying on uh, on the strength of the cement either um, like the, the glue which welds the plastics together uh, because it has these kind of cut-ins within the surface there are these cut-ins which mean that the force here pulling on the other piece directly um, and when it's all bolted together it's actually the it's the force of the nuts jamming it together which is forcing these two pieces these two pieces to lock onto this piece which is again giving it for giving it strength in this direction so I'm going to have eight of these in the design in total. Um, obviously, I'll need to take this off, take the protective uh, film off here first, but there's no point filming all of that. So, the assembly is actually pretty simple. The M8 rod actually forms a jig um, to help you assemble it, and obviously, you want to assemble it with the rod in there just to make sure everything's square so that's the first rod going in there and the bolts are loosely tightened up and then I'm going to put in the other pieces and just gradually tighten the bolts up so that's both side pieces on then just the uh, the end pieces in there then I should just be able to tighten that up get the oops that's the other end just tightened that rod up and get this one which should hold the other end piece in I mean possibly these end these little pieces here aren't totally necessary but I think that it helps brace the whole design and keep it 90 degrees and then the next step is simply fill this thing with the solvent cement because uh, you know it kind of discolors the the bits underneath the nuts a little bit but this piece needs to be really strong it's actually going to be a structural component it's going to take a lot of force considering how small it is. 
trusty solvent cement. So I'm just running large amounts into the tracks here. It's nice to keep those the sort of larger faces um, of acrylic on this machine nice and shiny but like I said this is this piece is not about uh, getting something that looks pretty it's just got to do a job because these uh, M8 rods are going to brace the entire x-axis they're going to hold the z-axis uh, vertical and uh, because I can twiddle these nuts it's actually going to let me square the whole thing off quite precisely uh, because I'll be able to adjust the length at each of these rods. So the idea with these is that when the uh, this is the x-axis carriage when it's assembled the z-axis the c-beam will rise up here um, and then these will be bolted on to these kind of uh, supporting structures here and uh, an M8 rod will run an M8 rod will run upwards to the top of the z-axis from each of these from each end of this and that will brace the entire structure it will triangulate it so if you imagine this rod is running through here this one will be going upwards and join to the top of the z-axis anyway there's no point waiting for that glue to dry you just have to take my word for it that this one came out well um, as I said the video that I'm going to make about uh, assembling the z and x-axis is probably not going to be so much of a build video I think that too much of those can just be boring there's no point watching me glue, the, glue this whole thing together um, I'll just kind of make a video to talk through the build after I've finished and, and show how it turned out. Anyway, if you found that uh, video interesting, please do subscribe because it's only part of a, a whole series that I've been filming um, involving building a CNC machine around this gigantic motor. And there's kind of a challenge I've set myself, which is that I'm only going to use acrylic because I have a laser cutter which can. Uh, can cut pieces out pretty quick. It's certainly quicker than 3D printing. And the idea is that once this whole thing is assembled, I'm going to cut roughly the same pieces again out of aluminium, and then I'll have an aluminium uh, CNC machine which is maybe capable of cutting steel. Who knows? So uh, please do subscribe if you want to see more stuff. The most popular video that I've done so far seems to be about assembling the motors um, and electronics. I'm going to be controlling this machine using a uh, Torino that is a sort of uh, Arduino clone which is uh, very ruggedly built with the ramps uh, and I've actually been using the Marlin firmware uh, but uh, slightly adapted for a CNC router. So please do subscribe if you want to see more of that stuff. Check my other videos out um, and uh, check back for no more hopefully next week when it starts to look more like a CNC machine.